Marcus Spears on ESPN's NFL Live, former player, talked about the Browns and how this team looks. When OBJ was out and the whole talk was about is it ba Baker is forcing the football to him? No, it's more knowledge. It's understanding what this offense is supposed to look like and, and understanding week by week, certain guys may have 130. One guy may have two or three catches, right? And the team has to live in that era. When you look at the Cleveland Browns and you think about completeness, and I'm trying to identify these teams. Dallas, I've seen it. We've talked about them. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with Buffalo after week one against the Steelers where they got a little bit of the ground game going, got backs involved. And Cleveland, obviously, with what they have with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. But when you think about this football team from the standpoint of What do you week, mean with those teams, though? What are you trying to say? The, the ability to play however you need yeah. to offensively. The way, the way right? we spoke about Dallas we, earlier. The way we spoke yeah. about okay. Dallas. And when yeah. you think when we, when we get to Cleveland, we talked about the talent. We knew it would take time for this maturation process to come about. But now when you look at this team with Odell Beckham Jr. back under a new situation okay. with Baker Mayfield understanding what Stefanski wants to do, that's what makes them more dangerous than they were last year. And uh, Dennis, I think um, what he's saying is, again, Odell adds another element to it and everybody's a, a little bit better because they've been in the system a year. Yeah, I love Marcus Spears, uh, no matter what, and even if he's saying something negative about uh, the Browns, but uh, Spears is fantastic at what he does. And, you know, I'm glad he brought up the egalitarian aspect of it because it isn't just, you know, the Cowboys that they were talking about recently. Think about the Belichick blueprint, the Belichick-Brady blueprint. We think about that now, especially because Brady is going into Foxborough for the first time as an opponent on Sunday night to face uh, to face Belichick. But Tom Brady, as great as he is, and he's the, the go, he's the greatest of all time, his passing numbers periodically during a season were pedestrian. They weren't incredibly eye-popping numbers every single week. He was capable of putting up monster numbers, but the game plan didn't call for it. The expert uh, brains of Belichick and, and Josh McDaniels uh, on the offensive side were able to identify, okay, what is it going to take to beat this particular team on this particular day? And they they exploited those weaknesses. And at the end of the, the, the day of the box score, you'd look at it and go, oh, well, Brady didn't do a whole lot. Well, you know what? He didn't have to. And there are games where Baker Mayfield doesn't have to set the world on fire. This past Sunday was one of them. The offense, for a change, was playing complementary, with an E, to the defense. The defense was carrying the day. It was obvious what the defense was doing, especially early when the offense couldn't get anything going. Even when the offense got going in the second half, it was still a defensive game. So. You can play complementary football and win, and in that complementary football, certain individuals don't have to have glowing numbers. As long as Mayfield recognizes it, which I think he does, as long as Odell recognizes it, which I now think he does, I think this team is fine with sharing the load and working week to week to exploit an individual opponent's defenses.